Hi, I'm Jonathan Stevens, and today we're going to jump into an exciting development in 3D Gaussian splatting. That's Polycam, and they have added it as a beta feature to their platform. And I think that's going to be something that's really intriguing to you if you want to get into 3D Gaussian splatting and you don't have the right PC or you don't want to go over that overhead of installing and running this complicated GitHub project. So we're going to dive into this. I'm going to show the differences between what you get with Polycam and what you get running the original project and then go into some pros and cons of why would you use one or the other. I hope this is helpful. In the end, I find that there will both be something that you want to look into. Let's jump into it. Okay, first off, we're going to jump into Polycam's new 3D Gaussian splatting interface here. And as you can see, it's it's Polycam is simple. I started a new account just to, to get fresh on this. And I tried only five data sets, but I'm just going to jump into one and then jump into the results for an original one that I did with the original projects. So we can compare some quality. So, um, of course, if you live under a rock and haven't seen my social media, I did my cat Cloud, who kind of looks like a cloud. And I thought this turned out really good. Um, he, you know, he got a lot of, of great details here. And I would say you see some like jumping of his fur, some blurriness in his face, but that's actually nothing to do with the Gaussian splatting from Polycam, I think. I think that's to do with the fact that as I moved the camera around, I didn't get all the angles, but also the, the white balance was, was kind of jumping around. But I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's running fast. It's running real time. This is on a nice computer, but again, I've ran this on my phone. I've ran this on an iPad, I've shown this to my kids. It's fast. Um, and that is something that's a huge pro that we're going to talk about at the end. Um, so there's my cat here in Polycam. I also ran this at 30,000 iterations on the original project. So let's jump into that really quick and take a look. Okay. So here's the model with my cat. I'm just going to change the way I move around to, um, trackball so I can get hopefully a little bit more. Um, and as you can see, let me just make all these little out of the way. You can see I did definitely pick out some more detail, but again, it's still fuzzy. And I don't think that has, again, anything to do about the splatting that was used, but more along the lines of the, the quality of the imagery. I didn't get enough, but you can get a lot of these really fine strands on his fur, which I thought looked really cool. Um, so this turned out really good. What I don't like is these floaters right in the camera frustrum. room. So you have to get like beyond that to really get rid of that. And you get to get really tight. So that's something I think 3D Gaussian splats in general needs to be fixed. Um, but some way to crop that out could make a huge difference. But this looks really good. So you do get some more level of detail. Like look at his fur and his hair. You're going to get a higher level of detail um, on these like high detailed surfaces. Now, will this translate to something like a room where the walls are pretty blank? I don't think so. Like here... My computer screen, things like that, it gives enough detail. I don't, I don't need to be perfect. My desk looks really good. It's not crazy detailed, but again, I don't, I don't need that. Um, but one thing I did notice is that these tend to be like three times as many splats as that I see um, using the, the, the Polycam version. So we're going to jump back to Polygam and just do a quick double check on the cat to see the difference. Okay, so here's my cat one more time, just so you remember. Um, Got quite a bit of detail. I'm just gonna drag in my other cat right on top and you can see that detail just kind of bumps up. So uh, this is the original project. This ran for about 50 minutes on my 3090 Ti and then there is Polycam. So definitely getting more detail, but still to me, this one looks really cool. I think this is impressive. This would be cool to put on a holographic display or something. All right, so let's jump into another one really quickly. Okay, so now this is an outdoor scene uh, captured with uh, a drone in uh, some of these northern islands in Scandinavia. It looks really cool. Um, the drone path was this like kind of long arcing linear drone path to all the way over here. And one thing I noticed with Polycam is I don't have like a yaw, so I can't, I can't get this horizon straight no matter what I do. So that's one downside because the drone is definitely over here when it took, it was actually came as far as over here when it was taking a shot and I, and it was horizontal, but I can't really change that. So the viewer is definitely limited 
but again, it's running real time on my browser. I don't have any hardware. It's just right here in Polycam, uh, their poly.cam website, which is a big pro for being able to show off this stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like, do I care? Um, I will eventually, but, but not a ton. Uh, one thing I did notice is, again, you got you can see the large splats at the top, and then the water is kind of got this grain texture, and it does really cool stuff with the reflections, but we're going to compare that to the original project real soon. Um, it did great around these rocks as well, but everything kind of has a general fuzziness about it, and I think that's just because the details in here are so small and so sharp that it's hard to represent it in um, the number of splats I ended up in this scene. So I'm going to quickly jump over to the original version and you can see what that looks like as well. So here's the original version. Uh, one thing I noticed is the colors look more sharp, which I think is fantastic. And the water looks more glassy, like I would expect in the original version. And if I go to the trackball here, I can get a little bit more movement. Um, this definitely looks more, I don't know, lifelike, but I still get some weird things like this, this pink that's that's nowhere to be seen in the scene, but that's because that's probably too far off the original frustrum. I do notice, though, that things still are kind of fuzzy if I'm not perfectly where the cameras kind of were taken. But if I get over here, you'll see that these rocks are a lot sharper. The grass looks a little bit more vibrant and sharper. So I'm going to bring this in really quick and try to get to that same area. Again, navigation is kind of tough. So, OK, so here we go. So things are looking pretty good, but you just see a little bit more high frequency detail here. But again, this isn't bad. I mean, this was this was free. It was fast. I didn't have to do anything. Um, but you can definitely see some of the, the details. So the water here, too, is very clear and crisp. And in this, you kind of get this kind of, I don't know, it looks like little scratches in the water. And again, I think that's just because it can't represent it with a limited number of splats. And again, so okay, when I come over here, everything's all tilted. Uh, when I come over here, everything is all tilted as well. This viewer, by the way, is not our friend. But I can then come to the side and adjust the yaw. So that's something, as much as I, I say is a, a con to polycam, it really isn't because that's something that they can easily add. I know that the crew over there is um, very capable of adding that. So um, this scene is incredible when you look at it. On the original one but it's not bad here as well I mean if, I, if I'm trying just to visualize this as well um, turned out pretty good okay so I'm gonna look at uh, a couple more examples here just gonna close this up if I go back to my projects I did run two experiments uh, this one is my other one of my three cats and it did not work out so well with polycam and I have no idea no idea why because it worked in the original one uh, I'm not even gonna compare it because there's no reason to but I thought that was interesting that like whole map must have failed or whatever they use in the background. And same one with this, which if you've watched like my uh, other tutorial videos, you'll I did one of me at my uh, college alma mater standing on a lawn. It's just trying to even get it to display correctly. Um, this is all I got. So I don't know what's going on there. It could be that maybe their pipeline had a problem because there were so many people hitting it all at once. I don't know. I'm not going to ding them for that. Um, no idea why this didn't work. I thought this would be a great comparison, but it didn't. Maybe there was there was too many splats that it capped out, something like that. So um, those were interesting. So, but it was free, so I didn't have to like worry about oh, did it work? I had to pay for that. Um, and then here's my last one. So this one was 99 photos. This was one of the very first nerfs I ever made. It's this bridge I captured about a year ago, um, and uh, the water was moving underneath it. It was kind of a cloudy day. It wasn't the best images, but it did a really good job, I thought. Um, but what I notice is, is, again, we kind of get down to details. So here's kind of my favorite shot. And let me pull in the other version to do a, like a, a back and forth comparison. OK, so here we go. We have the original one here, or the original project here. And then if I just quickly jump to this, you see there's a drastic difference. Um, he just got so much more detail in this wood. You got more detail in the trees in the background. And I think that's just because the limitation of what Polycam has to do. They did say that they're, I th someone has mentioned that they, they're capping it to 10,000 iterations and a certain amount of splats, 5 million 
And that would make sense because, you know, that needs, I don't know if you had um, 5 million spots, would it be able to be performant on a desktop browser or a phone? But um, it did do really well. One thing I noticed in both that I would dock at points for is the floaters. And those did not show up like that inside of the nerf. So you got all these, these floaters, especially around like these, these pieces of side uh, horizontal slats, tons of floaters. Um, I didn't get that. Another thing, interesting thing to look at is I can see like this park bench and if I get to this original version, you just see that it's, um, that tree, it's just like way more detailed, a little bit further on. But again, my focus is on the bridge and the bridge is really nice. Um, if we look at this sign here, it says bridge may be slippery when wet or when in or icy. That's kind of hard to read. Um, looks like almost like an AI generated sign. If I get into it again here. It's way more sharp. It's not perfect still, but let's just do a little comparison there. So, you know, these little high frequency details, uh, the colors are also a little bit more washed out. I don't know what that's about, but um, might be something about the web render. I, I, I don't really care so much about that. Um, so there we're at. So there's a good comparison between the two. Okay, so now you've seen both of the different versions and you can see visually there is a striking difference. Uh, there is still a strong reason to use one or the other. And I'm gonna quickly just kind of outline the pros and cons for each. So as you're trying to figure out, well, is it worth using Polycam? Is it worth setting up the original 3D Gaussian Splat project? Um, that's up for you to decide. So first we're gonna look at the original project talk about the pros and cons. So of course the biggest pro is the detail level. You can get way more detail using the original project. And with that, you can also tune the parameters. I can decide all kinds of things in there to get the optimal output for what you need. So again, it's like I get more control, but at the expense that I need a really expensive GPU. I'm running it on a 3090 Ti. 4090 is great, or one of those A6000s, but those are kind of getting hard to get a hold of still uh, in today's age, and they're expensive, versus Polycam, which is free. Uh, another big benefit of using the original project is I'm able to then to get that data into Unity, I can get it into Unreal Engine 5 using a plugin on the Marketplace, and I can get it into the Nerf Studio Viewer and get really great fly-through animations, and that's pretty easy to run. Uh, you have, have tutorials, on, I think, on Unity and the Nerf Studio if you want to look into that. Now, cons. Again, as I said, you need a really expensive GPU. That might just be out of your budget. That might be something you never, ever get to do. But also, it, time. It takes a lot more time to run out on my PC versus upload the images to Polycam and on your way. It's super easy with Polycam. All you have to do is drag your images into Polycam and you're off to the races. That's it, just hit start. Another big con to using the original one is that you, you have to have Windows or Linux. You can't just run it on a Mac. Um, so there's some limitations of how you can use it. If you're a Mac user, it's not even an option for you unless you wanna use like a collab, but it's still not the full experience. So now let's jump over to Polycam and kind of talk about their pros and cons. So with Polycam, again, it's free, it's easy, and I think the biggest pro about that, even though it doesn't have nearly the detail, is that you can test and play with data sets and learn to make these yourself without having to have the investment of the hardware and the time to process it. And that's huge. So it's a great way to sandbox play with things like this. And I can imagine that Polycam will, and as they've mentioned, increase the quality of the output over time. I think they did some of this knowing that we're going to get hammered in our servers. We might as well make it look good or be somewhat fast and look good versus try to do max quality. And this probably opens up some room for them to have a paid tier in the future. Another thing is you don't need to be an expert running code, pulling from GitHub, following my 40 minute video. You can just get up and running this by opening a browser, dragging images in and hitting start. And there you go. Super easy. And I think that might be the biggest barrier for most people who want to use 3D Gaussian splatting. And perhaps one of my favorite things is now I can embed my shares on like social media and let people see the model themselves that has an integrated web viewer. I don't have to build that myself. 
Uh, there is options for the original project, but it's it's not just out of the box. You would have to like do a bunch of server work and all that. You can just share these Gaussian splat scenes with your friends, families, coworkers, things like that. And I don't have to go set it up. It's just part of the polycam experience along with your other models that you did using just the, the, the regular polycam uh, functionality. So that is really compelling. So for a shareability, this is, this is what you want to use. So getting into the cons, we kind of cover those. The cons are the quality is not as high. The navigation is not as good. So those things are something to think about. But for again, for sandboxing, I think this is where you want to go. And you can't export things the same. So you can export a PLY file, but I haven't quite figured out how to get that in Unity or really use it. And I think maybe something's coming with that, but there's not as much usability downstream. So that is a big con for the original project if you want to try to use something else uh, with this data. It's kind of locked into the Polycam um, ecosystem. But for most people, I think that's fine. I don't think people really care about that. So I hope this helped you decide which version you would want to use. I think if you're new to the whole 3D reconstruction from images and you want to learn to make Gaussian splats without all the setup and everything, go use Polycam. It's great. But if you want to learn how to use Gaussian splats in Unity and doing really cool things and concepts, go use the original project. At that point, you probably already have all the hardware you need and you'll know what you're doing. So I hope you found this helpful. Please put in the comments if there's anything I missed that you want me to dive into in a future video. And please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to grow the information here so people can learn more about 3D Gaussian splats and all of this and nerfs and 3D reconstruction from images. I think this is important info. So I hope you guys follow along and I'll see you in the next video.